try this again. Proverbs 25 last night was very powerful. But it talks about precious silver and the taking of the dross away, getting it ready for the refiner. When you come to the full salvation plan of God and you find it in an Old Testament place where you never expected it to ever talk about salvation, you see God's plan at work. You see, when you fully come to God in full repentance and you're wanting to change your life and to live for God, the dross is taken away. The garbage is taken away out of your life. Your past is removed. It is remembered no more. Your present and future is remembered. And Satan's making a plan to accuse you of it all. You know, so many people fail for the simplest things. They fall short for the simplest things because they have no clue. They don't read. They don't study the Bible. They don't study to show themselves approved. They depend on others to do the study in for them and expect them to water them with what they need to hear. Brothers and sisters, I can only do so much and any pastor can only do so much. You still have to read for yourself. Study for yourself. You want the refiner's fire to work on you? Then you gotta study. You gotta read his word daily. You can't hope to get to heaven on someone else's work. You have to do your own work. That's what's holding you back. God has many blessings that he wants to give us. But we have to study. We have to read his word. Glean from his word, his knowledge and truth. It's in the words. And I'm not saying pick and choose and assume what it says. I'm saying read his word. It is written in it. Just like the salvation plan is in Proverbs 25. John 3, 16 through 21 is there in Proverbs 25. In the first seven verses, it talks about salvation, about clearing yourself, making yourself ready for God. What to avoid so that you can be ready for salvation. Just like Christ said it, don't go to a stray dog after he's bit you, basically. People do not understand that life lessons in Proverbs, moral virtues and their vices and their contrary vices, are there as a guide tell you what you should do. But how are you going to know this if you don't read the Word of God? How are you going to know what's coming if you don't read the Word of God? Because the book of the future is right there in your hands. But it was written thousands of years ago. It's kind of funny. 2,023 years ago, a man died on a cross, an innocent man died for yours and my sin. And it was witnessed and it was talked of and it was spoken of in more than just the Bible. Oh, but they'll tell you that it's not true when it is. When is it going to be enough to let go and let God lead and let God take the reins in your life and change you better. You can't do it on your own. There's no way you can do it on your own. God wants us to be full of his glory, full of his joy. But you can't have it if you're miserable. When are you going to let God take the dross away from your silver, from your precious silver? 
company that will become ready for the refiner. See, you're still just a lump of ore put in, put in the smelting pot waiting for the refiner. But you got to get the dross away first. You have to take the dross away. Then you got to start claiming victory over the enemy. Not letting your mind go back to the world. Take control. You have the authority in Jesus to stop your mind from wandering. But you need to read the Word of God to see what you need to do. How you should change. It's all written there. And don't be afraid. Because being afraid stops everyone. But having the victory in God and the strength of Christ to keep changing every day, that's what changes you. That's what makes you who you are in Christ. I said that, guys. God bless you guys. I love you. Peace and shalom. But before we go, let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just lift you up this morning. We give you the glory, O oh God, for waking us up. We thank you and praise you, O oh Heavenly Father, for giving us the peace that passes all understanding. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for showing us your plan and your word, O oh God. Your instructions we cling to, O oh Lord. We ask that you help us keep it in our heart and lock it in our heart that we can grow day by day in you, O oh Lord. Lord, we just want to ask for your our petitions right now, O oh Lord. For our brothers and sisters who are battling cancer, migraine, strokes, heart attacks, seizures, injuries that are coming back to haunt us as we get older in life, Lord. Give us strength to come through and heal. Lord, Riley and Betty Jo, keep your hand on Riley, right? On Betty Jo right now, oh Lord. And Riley. Secure their mind and secure their body, oh Lord. You prevented them from having major injuries. Lord, give them strength. Give them peace. Because right now, their still bodies are in turmoil. And they're still in trauma in their minds from the accident. Lord, we lift up Lisa. We lift up Gina. We lift up back to blue. We lift up straight forward, oh Lord. Lord, those are battling things that we don't know, like APA and NST and Army Battle, oh Lord. Like he's battling things. Give them the strength, oh God. Lord, we lift up John, that you draw him closer to you, oh God. JC, we draw him, that he is drawing closer to you every day. Jimmy, Bonita, Little Angel. Lord, I, the names are many. You know their needs. And Lord, I ask that you bless our enemies. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. That's your words. And we cling to those words, oh God. We just thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, right now. As we bathe in your presence this morning. As we feel your Holy Spirit come down on us right now, oh Lord. We just thank you for your presence being known. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that we know you heard our, our cries. We just thank you and praise you all day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Say love. God bless you guys. I love you. Peace and shalom.